Today on Metal Tips and Tricks, we are going to build this awesome cabinet. Hey guys, welcome back to Metal Tips and Tricks. My name is Dale. Today, I'm going to show you how to build this cabinet. And this is a unique cabinet. It's set up for my forge so I can do some blacksmith stuff. And what I've done is I've put two 40-pound tanks underneath it, and they're set up on a scale. So if you watch on the side there, you see that needle move? So from a distance, I can tell you how much propane, tank, propane is left in each tank. On the back side here, I've got a place to put tools and of course, the forge on top. So this build is actually being sponsored by Fireball Tools. Fireball Tools makes some of the most amazing welding squares you can find on the market. And I'm gonna demonstrate how fast and accurate and easy these squares are to use. So let's get to the build. We're really gonna leverage this square and getting this to set up correctly. I like to clamp straight to the tabs. And now we're gonna clamp it up for square. So if you see what I did there is, I've now got it set up to where the parts are gonna twist this way and these clamps are keeping it from going this way. We're gonna tack this in three different corners. Now we need to check for the squareness. This is really where the proof in the pudding is. We're gonna go from corner to corner. 48 and a quarter, just shy of that. 48 and a quarter, just shy. Perfect, now the other thing you could have a problem with when welding up a frame like this is it twists and it gets kind of what's called a potato chip effect. I'm just gonna sight down this, I'm gonna sight down that, see if it lines up. That's good, sight down that, perfect. In the old days before I had the square, what I would have done to put this together, I would have set up one of these frames, made it perfect. I would have done whatever it took to make it perfect. Sometimes what I'd do is actually, if it was out of alignment, I'd take bar clamps and squeeze it one way or the other way until I got it lined up again. And then I would take my components and I'd use the first frame that I made perfect, and I'd use that as my template to make the rest of them, but we're not gonna do that this time. We're gonna stay with the fireball tool because it worked out so well. Next up on this project is we've got four of these spacers to put in. One of the tricks I really like is I use bar clamps down below, just kind of hold the frame up, makes it really easy. We're now gonna switch over to the small aluminum magnet square. And the reason we're doing that is for versatility. It's a lot lighter to bolt on here and put into this area here. Now, if you'll notice, you can get longer tabs for these and they do have an advantage. The other cool thing is if you'll notice, one of these bolts is not like the other. And what's great about these, these are all tapped quarter 20. So just a normal bolt, if you lose one of these hex heads, can just go in there. And this is also a really good example of how that you can get the clamps into these different areas.
So here's where the proof is in the pudding. I should be able to lay this frame right on top. No rock. And the corner should line up. Actually, let me line up this one. I don't think I've ever built a frame that has come out this square, this easy, this fast. Now, let's get to welding this entire project together. Perfectly square all the way around. Now I can do the final welds and get this thing put together. Up next on this project, we need to make a steel frame that fits inside here, because remember, we're building a cabinet. So a cabinet is a frame with sides in it. And we'll be building those sides in a little bit, but first we want to build a frame. And I want to put out, well, I want to take away some troll food. I know when I measured this out and said it was square, I know there was a lot of skeptics out there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to weld up a frame. And if that frame is square and this is square, I should be able to put it in there. Not only just put it in, flip it around, turn around, and show you that it's square. So what I want to do is show you a more practical way to prove that when I weld it up with the fireball square, that everything is square. So there is square, machine is square, and then there's fabrication square. And this is definitely an amazing fit for fabrication because I could take this frame, flip it around, and it fits in every direction. But for me to fabricate this my old way, what I would have done was put my frame pieces in here and weld it to it in place, but it could only fit in one direction. Now, let's cut out and put the panels in here. I've worked out some really interesting designs for the panels, but at the end of the day, they warped the material so much that I couldn't get them flat, so we're just gonna go with a simple raised panel due to time on this project. We're gonna run them through the bead roller, raise the panel, then we're gonna come over to the shrinker stretcher, and we're gonna actually shrink it just a little bit here and there to take up some of the material so it gets to lay flat. So let's get the bead roller going. Panel's laying flat. Looks like I'm not going to have to go to the shrinker stretcher. Um, so let's go on to the next panel. We're going to end up putting two doors on this cabinet. One of the things i got to be concerned with is how I want the doors to open. If I just set the hinge up normally, where it pivots right here at the frame, I'm only going to get a 90 degree opening, and I actually want 180 degrees. So that causes me some complications. I can't just simply put the hinge on and have it just open because it's going to be recessed. So what I need to do is actually get the pivot point up high enough to where when it opens, it opens 180 degrees.
One of the great things about steel is it has predictable qualities. One is if you weld it, it's going to warp. And of course, after welding up this edge here, we have quite a severe bend in it. But again, it's metal, so we have predictable results that we can work with. We know if we hit it, we're going to stretch it. The question is, what has happened here? So we got one side that is shorter than the other, that's why it's bent. And I'm going to hit this until, well, you'll see. So the edge is coming out pretty nice. It will straighten out almost perfect. Now I am putting hammer marks throughout this. We'll grind those off a little bit later. But you can see it doesn't take much to straighten this out. But you need to be aware of it. You can see how I clamped it to that 2x2 two two square steel. And that was what helped hold it from when I was welding to warping too much. Hey guys, I want to talk about what I call the propane scale. So I finally got this thing put together. It's taken, uh, well, basically it's taken me two days to, to come up with design and have it work out. And basically what we have is a steel frame with a hoop in it. And the hoop, really easy to build on the roller. And this is where the propane tank actually sits inside here. It's all on kind of an apparatus. Some of the challenges is finding things that weigh just the right amount so I can test this. Um, I have a spring here. It's a fairly large spring. It's only good for about 65 pounds. Well, a 40-pound tank filled weighs in at about 80 pounds from what I can tell. So I need to come up with about 80 pounds of steel to test the spring strength. And where this point is is important where the spring actually comes onto this lever. This really changes. The further out here, the less tension the spring is under. And you want to find, of course, that nice equilibrium. And the longer the spring is, what I've found out, the more accurate it is. The more tension that's divided through the coils makes this stay in the exact same spot with the exact same weight, well, give or take. It's going to be interesting to see how this holds up over time. If it stays accurate, does the spring stretch? Next up, we have to design some sort of lever action that transfers this height over to a gauge that's easy to read when working on the forge. 
the goal of this is so I can have a quick reading of how much propane is in the tank without having to turn the tanks on. There are other methods that actually work great. There's gauges you can buy that will tell you how many more pounds or how, many, how much more pressure is left in the tank, but you have to turn them on. And I wanted to be able to do it from a quick glance. So what I've done is set up this system here, and it's pretty simple. There's just a rod that connects to a pivoting arm, and that attaches to a shaft that attaches to a needle. cabinet is now done. Well, there's still a couple little things I need to take care of. I need to plumb in this gauge. I'm also going to change that around a little bit, but it's basically done. I also have plans to make an anaerobic forage for this, which will be really, really cool. I think it'll be a great video. I also want to give a shout out to Jason over at Fireball Tools uh, for sending me these squares. You see how easy it made this process. And if you want to learn more about these, you can go check out his YouTube channel, Fireball Tools, and also you can check out his website to find out more detail on this. And I got to say, his YouTube channel has some great, great information on it. So down below will be all the links so you can find his stuff. So if you'd like to find out about new tools, new techniques, and building something cool, well, I think this channel is for you. So hit the subscribe button and also click on the little bell so you get notifications of when the next video is going to come out. All right, guys. Till next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks. Mm -hmm.